The year is 2025. What's the right way to deploy an Azure ML designer model today? Welcome to this video on Azure Machine Learning. My name is Kevin Fiesel, and I'm the proprietor of Catalyxy Services LLC, a consulting firm which specializes in work all across the data platform space, especially SQL Server. In this video, I'm going to take us through some of the updates that happened during 2024 in Azure Machine Learning with respect to deploying Azure ML designer models. I'm also going to throw in how to deploy auto ML models as a bonus. The impetus behind this is a series of comments on my video on deploying a model with the Azure ML designer. In this video, I'm going to do two things. First, I will deal with an issue that we've all run into in the test tab, where V1 deployment testing is something Microsoft no longer supports. Then I will show you how to deploy a separate auto ML model that you have trained via an online managed endpoint, and I'll explain how these two fit together. There is a lot to cover, so let's jump right into our demo. This is the Azure Machine Learning Studio. In case it's been a while, let me take you through what we have. In the Assets menu on the left-hand sidebar, we see a data entry. This contains a variety of data assets, some of which I've uploaded and some of which Azure ML has created. There are four data sets that I've used when covering Azure ML in videos. The first is Chicago parking tickets. This is an upload of a fairly simple file containing information on parking tickets in the city of Chicago, Illinois. Next up, we have Chicago parking tickets folder. This is a directory containing that same file and was something that I used for code first operations. Next up, we have a Chicago parking tickets unlabeled dataset. This one contains two files that I use for batch inference. These files include everything except for the label. That is the thing I'm trying to infer from this data. Finally, we have the Chicago parking tickets batch inference data asset. This is a text file. And again, it contains data inputs, but it does not include the label. I used this for the video on batch processing in the Azure ML designer. There is a link to that in the description below. Uh, we aren't going to use all four of these data assets in the video, but I did want to call them out upfront as we are doing a variety of operations and well, sometimes you need to reshape your data along the way. Next up, we have the designer option in the authoring menu. I've created a variety of endpoints around Chicago parking tickets data. For this video, I'm going to start from scratch with a new training pipeline. To do so, I'll select the create a new pipeline button from the class pre-built menu. From here, I'm going to speed run through the process of creating the training pipeline. If you want a more detailed explanation, check out my video on training in the Azure ML designer. I'll have a link to it in the description below, and I will note those items haven't changed through 2024. Let's get to building. First, I need to add a data set. So let me make sure the flyout pane is open and then I'll select the data tab. From there, I'll find the Chicago parking tickets data set and drag it on. Next, I'll need to clean missing data and there happens to be a component for that. I can search for the component and drag it onto the canvas and then hook up my data set as the input. Double clicking on this component, I'll navigate to edit column and then add two columns. The first is tracked and the second is police district. As far as cleaning goes, I'll keep the custom substitution value of zero and just leave everything else alone. Next, I need to add a split data component. I'll keep 70% in the training data set and I'll leave 30% for testing. I will also leave the random seed at zero, meaning that each time I run this, it's going to split the data differently and I'm okay with that. After this, I'll add a train model component. The dataset input will hook into split data's training dataset output and then select the model component. My label is called payment is outstanding. So let me put that into the box and save. I also need an untrained model to hook into the other input. In the prior training video, I used a two class decision forest. This time around, just for the sake of variety, I'll use a boosted decision tree. Let's drag that in and then select the untrained model component to choose hyperparameters. I'll change the maximum number of leaves per tree to 40 and bump up the number of trees to construct up to 500. Otherwise, I'll leave things alone. We have a trained model, but now we need to score it in order to see how it performs against new data. For that, I can use the score model component. 
I'll hook up the trained model and the remainder of my split data. Finally, I want to evaluate the model and see how it fares. For that, I'll add an evaluate model component and hook the score model output to it. I've got things pretty well hooked up, so let's select configure and submit. I'll use the Chicago parking tickets designer experiment I created before and then select next. I don't have any inputs or outputs, so let's move on. As far as compute goes, I'd like to use my CS compute instance. For training a data set this small, it'll be more than enough horsepower for the job. On the final page, I can select submit and kick off the pipeline job. Now, this is going to take a while to run, so because we are speed running this, I will ask my editor to fast forward just a bit. Editor, if you please. Okay, now we are all wrapped up and have a training pipeline. The next step is to create an inference pipeline. To do that, I'll select the Create Inference Pipeline dropdown and then choose Real-Time Inference Pipeline. This is something that I did in the prior video on deploying an Azure ML pipeline, but I won't quite speed run through this part. We can see the Chicago parking tickets dataset as my initial input, as well as a couple of files on the left-hand side, a TD folder that contains instructions on the transformations we will perform, and an MD folder that contains a model specification and scoring file. We don't need to worry about these because the Azure ML designer auto-created them for us. This may look like it's ready to go, but it's actually not. First, I'm going to remove the Chicago parking tickets dataset. The reason is twofold. Reason number one, I want to define my own input dataset that does not include the payment is outstanding column. This is our label, and it's weird to ask users to send in the label when they're expecting us to send them the label. Second, I need to add a web service input to enable users to call my model via API. Let's bring in an enter data manually component. To this, I'm going to copy and paste a block of data examples. It's just four examples, but it'll do just fine. Next, I'll bring in an edit metadata component. The issued date column needs to be in a specific format for Python, and we are going to confirm the data type. We'll make the data type a date time, and then I need to put in a format. This format shows how we expect users to send us new dates and times. With that, we can hook up the edit metadata output to our apply transformation dataset input. Finally, I'll bring in a web service input and link it in with the dataset as well. There's nothing special that I need to do on that input. Finally, I'll delete the evaluate model component. It's not going to be particularly useful as I don't have any labeled answers to evaluate. Just like before, I will configure and submit. And again, just like before, I'll choose the Chicago Parking Tickets Designer Experiment. Then I can skip the inputs and outputs section and move on to runtime settings. My compute will be a compute cluster that I've called CPU cluster. It is a small cluster, but it'll work just fine for this. After that, I can review and submit the job. Now this one shouldn't take quite as long to finish as the inference process doesn't have as many processing steps as training. Nonetheless, I will once again ask my editor, please speed us up. Great, great. We are now done building the real-time inference pipeline. Now it's time to deploy this bad boy. To do so, I'll select the deploy button. This brings me to a menu to deploy to a new real-time endpoint. As a bit of foreshadowing, what Azure ML Studio calls a real-time endpoint here is not the same as their V2 managed online endpoints, which they also call real-time endpoints versus the classic web service, which is this. Are you confused yet? Good. Let's give this thing a name like Chicago Parking Tickets hyphen RT. For compute type, we'll select an Azure container instance. I'll leave the CPU and memory reserve capacity alone as this is a very easy model to execute. Instead, let's just select deploy. And we need to wait again. Unlike before, instead of fast forwarding through this, let's just jump cut to the end. Okay, we now have a running service. There are four tabs at the top and the one I want us to focus on here is the test tab. If I navigate to that tab, I can see a message that commenters started reporting on my deployment video a few months back. V1 deployment testing is not supported. Like I hinted at before we deployed this, 
Azure ML Designer endpoints use the old V1 standard, and Microsoft no longer allows us to execute tests against the V1 endpoints from Azure ML Studio. So what can we do? Well, let's navigate back to the Details tab. Scrolling down near the bottom, we have the Swagger URI. If I copy this link and paste it into a new browser tab, we can see that it defines the scoring endpoint. I'm gonna copy all of this text. Next, I will switch to Postman, a tool that is very useful for testing APIs. It's a free tool. I highly recommend downloading and using it. I'll select the import button up near the top and paste in my JSON. This gives me the ability to create a new Postman collection for my Chicago parking tickets calls. I'll select import. We can see that there are three folders, swagger.json, slash, and score. Let's drill into score. Inside of here, there is one post operation to run the ML service. The URL is base URL slash score, where base URL is a variable we are going to need to set. To do so, let me navigate to the Chicago parking tickets hyphen RT top level. Here we can see the variables menu. The value of base URL is currently slash, which isn't helpful at all. Let's go back to Azure ML Studio. The base URL for this endpoint is everything before the slash score in the rest endpoint box. Let me copy the entire box for the sake of simplicity, and we will fix it later. Back in Postman, I will change the initial and current values, pasting in the entire URL and removing the slash score bit from the end. After doing this, I'll select the Save button from the top to make sure that I actually save my changes. Now let's select the Run ML Service again. I already have the base URL set up, so next, let me go to Authorization. We can see that the auth type is API key. If I look at the value box, there's a variable named API key. If I mouse over that, it'll ask me to enter a value for API key, but I'm not actually going to use that. Instead, I will switch the auth type to bearer token because that's what I'll have available to me. Now that I've done that, let me switch once again back to Azure ML Studio. In the consume tab, we have two keys, a primary key and a secondary key. I'll copy the primary key. Then I'll go back to Postman. I'll paste in the value of the primary key into my bearer token and we are good to go. The last thing I want to check is the body tab. Here we have a JSON object named inputs. Inside of inputs is a JSON object named input one. This is a list of JSON objects, each of which contains a series of column names and data types. The idea here is that you'll need to paste in your actual values where those data types are. Fortunately, I happen to have a separate test in which I've done this before, predict payment in the AML Chicago parking tickets collection. Let me open that one up and make sure I'm in the body tab. Then I'll copy the contents of input one. Switching back to the run ML service endpoint test, I can paste in my values. Once I've done that, the collection is ready to run, so let's do it. It takes just a moment and we can see a results object return. Inside is a collection of outputs from web service output zero, including my scored label and the scored probability of each. I will admit that this is a fraction of the convenience level of just having a test tab in place, and I'm not sure why Microsoft removed this functionality from the Azure ML Studio test menu, but at least there is a different way to do this. And now for something completely different. Let's see how we can deploy an Azure ML automated machine learning model. Navigating to the automated ML item in the authoring menu, I can see a Chicago parking tickets auto ML job. It took approximately two and a half hours to complete, so I'm not gonna wait for it to complete again. Instead, let me just select this job. On the right-hand side, we can see the best model summary. Inside of it is a voting ensemble model. I'll select that model, and it will take me to a screen for this nifty Napa model. On here, I have a deploy menu. I can choose to deploy this to a real-time endpoint, a batch endpoint, or a web service. I'm gonna talk about these in reverse order. Web service is the original deployment choice, allowing you to choose between running a model in the Azure Container instance or in Azure Kubernetes service. Batch endpoint, naturally, is how you would deploy this if you want to perform batch inference. 
we are going to choose the real-time endpoint, standing up a web service to infer results based on this model and the data caller send in. That brings me to a deployment screen. And you can see this real-time endpoint deployment screen is different from the real-time endpoint deployment screen we saw for the designer earlier. That is the endpoint screen that you would actually see if you selected web service. So again, it's weird that they reuse the same name and still have both components floating around with the same name, but we're just gonna have to live with it. Each endpoint here has one or more deployments, which specify details such as how much compute power you want the model to consume, the name of the endpoint, the name of the deployment, and more details like scoring scripts. I'll drop the instance count down to one because I'm the only person who will hit this endpoint and that'll save me a bit of cash along the way. Aside from that, however, the rest of this looks fine. I could specify a better deployment name, but this is good enough for me. Also, note that the original deployment name is the name of the registered model followed by a hyphen and the number one. Okay, that's enough dallying. Let's select deploy. This will generate a new deployment and stand up an endpoint to expose it. We can see a success indicator, so now I'll navigate to the endpoints menu item where we have our CS Azure ML endpoint. As for CS Azure ML hyphen SKDXH, that's what we in the business call foreshadowing. Stay tuned to learn more. In the meantime, let's select our new endpoint. This shows me that we are currently creating the deployment. Once again, dear editor, if you don't mind. Good, good. This video has been a lot of hurry up and wait, I tell you. If I refresh the page here, we can see that the deployment is live. I'm going to need to remember this rest endpoint. Then I'll go over to the consume tab. I have here a primary key and a secondary key for authentication, just like I did before. I'll copy once again the primary key. Now I'm in Postman again, and I have an API test staged for my use. In the URL menu, I'll switch the name of the URL to what I need it to be. Then in the authorization menu, I'll change the bearer token to be the primary key that I just copied. If I switch over to the body menu, we can see the body shape for this deployment. It is a JSON object. The first thing the object contains is an input data JSON object. Its first element is a columns list specifying all of the columns we expect the user to pass in. The second bit is an index, which I've set to zero. Finally, we have our data, a list of data inputs. Each data input is itself a list and it contains values for each one of the columns we specified. By the way, you might be wondering, how did I figure out that this was the input shape that I needed? Well, back in Azure ML Studio, I can select the test tab. And because this is a V2 endpoint, I can actually use the test tab. It gives me a rough idea of the shape of the data, though I did need to piece together what to put in for the index and data lists. Returning to Postman, if I select the send button, this request successfully posts to the API and we get back the value one, indicating that given the details we passed in, this person was likely to have paid off their parking ticket. This video was a bit of a twofer. First, we quickly, well, at least for some definition of quickly, established that there is a problem with deploying endpoints from the designer and testing them afterward. We then walked through the process of testing these. After that, we deployed a model from Azure ML's automated machine learning process. Because we deployed it as a V2 managed online endpoint, we were able to use the test tab successfully. In both cases, we performed the actual tests with Postman, and I highly recommend that you use that for your testing rather than relying on the test tab in Azure ML Studio. We'll have links and show notes in the description below. And until we see each other in the next video, take care.